the grave cannot praise you. We are mindful of the fact that you brought us this far. And Lord, you are not giving up on us. So we, our eyes have seen. Our mouth can tell of your goodness. Even as we go into the teaching of your word this morning, we receive understanding. We had that light, we flood our eyes. We are living here better than the way we came. Jesus is honored. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's celebrate the choir once more. They did very well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. We are taking off from where we started last week. Verse 11. Romans 12, 11. We are still on the higher consecration. And I'm taking my time out to teach all through on that great subject. Romans 12, verse 11. You know what we did last week, Thursday? How that we said, your desire is what propel the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit. We said, whatever that you desire as touching the gift of the Spirit, those gifts will be what you will manifest. That prophecy is already inside of you. Would you say that with me? Say prophecy is inside of me. Say the gifts of healing is inside of me. The working of miracles is inside of me. Tongues and interpretation inside of me. Everything that is given by the Spirit, I already have them. My desire is what manifests. It's my desire that prepares it. So, he said, not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. A translation says, be a glow for the Lord. In the year that God has brought us into, God wants us to be fervent. Give me two different renderings. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because of what I'll be sharing today. In quite a number of people, they blame everything on the devil. They blame everything on the government. They blame everything on nothing else but them. They will never admit. Never be lazy. So it means that some of the things we blame people up for sometimes could be laziness. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord. How? Enthusiastically. He said, no, I'm, you're putting church on your head. You should put it on your head. Because God has brought you this far for the purpose and he has so much in store for you. Don't burn out. Keep yourself fueled and what? A flame. Be a lot servant of the master. That is to say, we should not for any reason just burn out. We should not let our love for the things of God was cold. We should not allow things just go down. It's up to us how we keep things this year. This year, you're not going to blame anybody for anything. You are going to take responsibility for your life. Stop being lazy over spiritual things. Stop being lazy over your service to God. Stop being lazy over the issue of evangelism, issue of prayer, issue of the study of God's word, issue of coming to church to learn. He said, you need to be fervent in spirit. Now, look at how he puts it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll read from verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You know, we use the word here, you know, being fervent in the spirit. We say it is zelo in the Greek. It means that you should be red hot for the Lord. Be red hot. He said, praying with our what? Next verse. We are reading to 20. In everything. How? He said, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So God's will is thanksgiving. This year, I see you doing plenty of thanksgiving. That's God's will. He said, quench not the spirit. Who will quench? Who shouldn't quench? So it means that it's within your power to allow the flow of the spirit. It's also within your power to restrain. The word quench means do not restrain. Leave it in verse 17. I want to spend a little time there. It means do not extinguish. You know when there is a flame, you bring your extinguisher to put out the fire. He's saying don't extinguish your zeal for the Lord. Do not put out your bony desire for the Lord. Don't allow the flame of the spirit of God to go out of your life. Don't be lazy over spiritual things. Don't be lazy over your prayer life. Don't be lazy over your study life. Don't be lazy over your commitment to God. Your evangelism. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Don't, don't extinguish it. Don't let it out. Keep the fire burning. And now the Greek word for that is, is such a funny thing that I cannot even pronounce it. It's X-B-E-N. X-B in case you are writing. But media, I thought they will have it. 
S B S Assyria Syria S B E double N U M I Spononi is the that is the word for quench. You are already on the spice. The one I ask you to put, you have not put. Look at it there. It's Benoni to extinguish or to go out, to let the fire go out. That's the Greek word. Now, when the Bible says, quench not the spirit, you cannot quench the spirit of God. You can restrain the flow of the spirit. That's what the Bible is saying. Help me tap your neighbor. Don't restrain. Don't suppress the flow of the spirit through you. Now, let's use amplified version of that verse. Amplified version of verse 19. Amplified. I think amplified uses the same word that I'm trying to explain. Amplified of um, 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Amplified. Please, are you, are you tired of me? Are you following what we are doing? Okay, amplified, I said. Amplified. Let's read amplified rendering together. Amplified. Want to go. Do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. Now, it means the activity of the Holy Spirit in your life is up to you to allow it or not to allow it. The Spirit is always speaking. The Spirit is always moving, but it's up to you to allow it or not. And so, amplifies it. Don't suppress it. I think that is closest to the original word, which is not to extinguish it. So, no man can suppress the Spirit other than you. No man can suppress the flow of the Spirit other than you. So, he said quench not the spirit so who will quench the spirit you who will suppress the flow of the spirit you who will allow the flow of the spirit you so 2022 a year of higher consecration we should allow the flow of the spirit we should be zealous for the lord we should desire we should be a glow for the lord we should desire spiritual let the spiritual be what consumes all you know what jesus said he said the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. So it means the zeal of the things of God should take over you this year. And that is exactly what we are saying. He said quench not the spirit. How do we not quench the spirit? Everybody ask that question. How do we not quench the spirit? Verse 20 will not tell you how not to quench the spirit. Look at what verse 20 say. Next verse, media. It said do not burn the, sorry, do not spawn the gift and all trances of the prophet. Do not depreciate prophetic revelations, nor despise inspired instruction or exhortation or warning. You know, Amplified makes it, uh, you know, laborious because it was written by a woman. A woman is actually the one that did the translation of the Amplified rendering. But this is what the King James said. said, do not despise. So, how do I not quench? The only way not to quench is not to despise what I have. Did you hear what I just said? He just put it succinctly. The next verse says, despise not what? Despise not what? Is prophesying within you? Is it within your reach? Yes. But you despise the flow of the spirit. Now, why do you despise the flow? Sometimes we just feel, I'm not qualified. Will God use someone like me? No, you are the exact person God wants to use. So it means extreme the things of the spirit. What do I say? Extend the things of the spirit. To give or to make of no small account. That is, you extend it. Now, you must realize there's so much in you that you must extend. Philemon 1 says, verse 6, that the communication of your faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. So, number one, do I have all the nine gifts of the spirit? Now, I must acknowledge that I have and not despise it. And when I don't despise it, what do I do? At every given point in time, I trust that the Spirit of God will speak through me. At every, gift, at every given point in time, I know God has a word for somebody. At every given point in time, I know God wants to speak to me. So he said, do not despise. So much of the things we see in the body of Christ today, that people are not flowing in the things of the spirit, is largely due to the fact that people, they refuse to esteem what is in them. Let me say it with a loud voice. Say, I have the spirit and all his gifts in me. I can prophesy, but I need to desire to see it come to pass. 
So that is what happens in this year of higher consecration. We desire spiritual. You remember where we started from Thursday in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1. It said follow charity but what should you do? Desire. So it means your desire determines what you flow in. Am I communicating? What you don't desire, you can't flow in it. What you desire becomes what you see manifest in your life. Somebody say desire. desire. Say like you mean it, say desire. desire. Now when the Bible says do not quench the spirit, it's saying do not blow out the flow of the spirit. When it says don't despise, it's saying don't look down on what is in you. You have so much in you that quite a number of us will look down on the things that we have. Can I shock you this morning? In Philippians chapter 4. I like to read from verse 4. And quite a number of us we don't know. That by virtue of the fact that we are saved. Something has happened on our inside. He said rejoice how? In the Lord for how many times? So one of the things you do. To keep your spirit aglow. Learn to rejoice. Oh you didn't hear what I just said. He said rejoice in the Lord. How many times? What's the meaning of always? When things don't look good, rejoice. Don't allow things quench the flow of your spirit. Don't allow anything make you think that God has left you. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't allow anything make you feel you are not qualified to be used of God. He said, rejoice in the Lord. Always again. I said rejoice. One of the things you must tell yourself you will do today and in this year, I'm not going to wait for Dr. Combs to make me happy. I'm not going to make any, wait for anybody to make me rejoice. I have made up my mind. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And I have joy as a fruit of the Spirit because joy is supplied by the Spirit. Therefore, on my inside, I will keep rejoicing. I'll keep rejoicing. I say I will keep rejoicing. That is how not to quench the spirit. That is how not to despise what you have. Am I speaking to somebody? Tap your neighbor say despise not prophesy. You must keep the flame burning. Keep the flame burning. Speak to your neighbor say keep the flame burning. Who is the first to say amen here? He said rejoice in the Lord always again so when we say despise not prophesying quench not the spirit we are saying we must know what we have in the Lord there is a joy of salvation that we have and we must keep it aflame this year who am I talking to let's get back to that Romans and chapter 12 verse 11 we read verse 11 look at the next thing he said in verse after verse 11 verse 12 said something so striking so we read Romans 12 11 and 12 he said not slothful where in business fervent where in spirit how next verse he said rejoicing where there was one element that is of the spirit that you must not disregard this year is the joy of salvation. You must keep it aflame. You must keep it aflame. He said quench not the spirit. If there's anything you shouldn't quench. Let it be the joy of salvation. You know many years ago I preached a message here. Called a Bemihola. A medium of dance. A place of celebration. And I remember quoting the book of Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. And I, maybe I will look through Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. But the point I'm saying is that there is a way not to quench the spirit. It's not to despise what you have. And what is it that you have? I have the joy of salvation. And this is how I keep the spirit flowing. It's a rejoicing in hope. This hope is not in anticipation of what is to come. But hope of confident expectation of what has happened. There's something that definitely that has happened in you. And we rejoice in that. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant we are in prayer. Habakkuk 3 verse 17 and 18. Quickly. Habakkuk. Don't forget where we are coming from. Quench not what? How do we not quench the spirit? Despise not. Come on. How do we not quench the spirit? Despise not prophesying. And we are saying that we desire spiritual gift. We covet them. So how do we flow in these things? Look at it. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Neither shall fruit be in the vine. 
The labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no hair in the store. You will read verse 18 with me. Yet. Tap your neighbor and say, this is how not to quench the spirit. This is how not to despise what you have. He said, because quench not the spirit. How? He said, despise not prophesying. So it means you must esteem what you have. It means you must value what you have. When you say don't uh, uh, despise not, it means hold in high esteem. It means do not disregard what you have. And one of the things that you must know that you have, we have the joy of salvation. That joy of salvation propels our walk with the Lord. The joy of, of, of salvation propels our zeal for the things of the Lord. The joy of salvation should be the reason I am fervent in spirit. I'm not going to be lazy this year. I'm not going to be slothful this year. I'm going to be serving the Lord and in serving the Lord, I'll keep rejoicing. I don't care whether the fig tree produces. Pastor, you don't know what is happening. They are talking about inflation. Thank God for inflation. But before you inflation. I've got something on my inside. It is called the joy of salvation. And as I keep acknowledging what I have, things begin to fall in place for me because that is the number one way I serve the Lord. How do I not quench the spirit? I should not despise what I have. How do I not despise what I have? I should acknowledge something I got in salvation. I have joy. Somebody say I have joy. That is why he said rejoice always. And again I say what? Rejoice. Come on say it with me. Again I say what? Rejoice. It means that every time. 24 7. Every time around the clock. You should not have a bad day. Uh -huh. Tap your neighbor say I'm not going to have a bad day this year. I'm not going to allow you offend me. Look at your neighbor. I'm not going to let you deter my walk with the Lord this year. I have joy of the spirit. I'm going to rejoice always. It really doesn't matter what happens around me. I've got the joy of salvation. And I'm going to allow the joy of salvation guide me this year. My service to the Lord will be top notch. My work of the spirit will be top notch. I will convert more of the flow of the spirit of God. All nine gifts of the spirit that are inside of me will find expression through me this year. No gift will be dormant in me this year. Every gift will find full expression this year. My service to the Lord, may we see the free flow of the gift of the spirit in me because it's within the poor view of my desire. He said desire, convert, endlessly desire, be zealous of spiritual things and this is my zeal and one way I can start it is to maintain my joy yes. tap your neighbor say you better maintain your joy look at your neighbor in his eye say you better maintain your joy every joy killer walk away from them Woo, glory be to God let me shock you again in Isaiah chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 1 I will get to verse Three. But I just want to quickly set the stage for Thursday service. I'm setting the stage for because on Thursday I will visit a Bemihola strongly. He said, And in that day thou shalt say, O oh Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou was angry with me, thy anger is torn away, and thou comforted me. Quickly, who is on the council? Behold, God is my servant. He was talking about the day of salvation. That our sins were washed away. And God has comforted us. He said, I will trust and be not and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is also. He also is mine. So what do you do with your salvation? Therefore. 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 What came with your salvation is joy. Therefore. What do you do with joy? You draw water from all of the things you have in Christ. It is with joy. So when he said, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. 
How do I not quench the spirit? Not despising what I have. So what do I have? I found out that I have the joy of salvation. Pastor, I have not eaten for two days. Glory be to God, I have not eaten. Food or no food, there is something stronger than food. Money or no money, there is something stronger than money. There is something money cannot buy. It is called the joy of salvation. So how do I get my food? I must get my joy in place to draw from the well of salvation the food that I need. Who am I talking to today? Squeeze your neighbors and say, Pastor is talking to you. Say your joy must be in place. You must acknowledge what you have in Christ. You have joy on your inside. You know, I've seen people say, you see the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit began with love. Inside love we have joy. That's why when Paul wrote to the church in Rome, he said the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. It is righteousness. Peace. Joy, where? Joy in where? Because you are going to practice some level of joy this morning before you leave here. I don't care the kind of body you came with. That body is coming to suppress the flow of your spirit. So Paul writing to the church in Thessalonica, he said, excuse me, don't quench the flow. Don't suppress the flow. Don't extinguish the flow of the spirit. How do you not do that? He said, don't despise, prophesy it. Me, don't despise the supernatural. Don't despise the flow of the spirit. And how do we find out that? We found are and one way we maintain that is by the joy of the spirit the joy we have in salvation that joy keeps you afloat in a world that others are sinking but your head is lifted above the waters am i speaking to somebody let me squeeze your neighbor's hand and say joy, joy. is contagious. contagious say like you may say joy, joy. is contagious joy. and i expect that from you something should flow to me let me say to your neighbor, avoid joy killers this year. Anyone who is not on the same wavelength with the things of the spirit cut off. Isaiah 61 verse 10. You know, one of the things we did those early days, back in the days when we were growing up, we look for those people who are operating the supernatural. We want to be in the company of those people. You know, it happened in the days when they were going after uh, David and then Saul wanted him. And then he ran to where uh, Samuel and other prophets were. And as soon as he got there, they began to prophesy. And Saul came after David to pick him. But when he got within the circumference where the supernatural was operating, the Bible said he began also to prophesy. And the man prophesied until he became naked. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. You, when you, there, there is a company you find yourself, you operate the supernatural. You know, once they ask Saul, he saw now among the prophet. Because we know him to be the king. He was not operating in the supernatural. But Samuel said, when you are departed from me today, you meet a company of prophets. When you meet them, the spirit of God will come upon you. It means there are things that are contagious. Joy is contagious. And anybody that comes in contact with you, something should lit up in their life this year. Am I communicating? Something should lit up in their life this year. The joy of salvation must come alive and let people come into the fullness of all that God has for them. You see, quite a number of people are sense rude, but that is not our habitat. Our habitat is the supernatural. Our habitat is the spiritual. We are spiritual. And if we are spiritual, we ought to flow in the spirit. Like we quoted earlier on, Paul, right into the church in Corinth, he said, we walk by faith and not by sight. It means we walk by the things of the spirit and not things of the senses. And if we walk by the things of the spirit, it behoves of us to know how we trigger all of these things. Number one, we can refuse to quench. We refuse to suppress. Then we refuse to despise what we have. We esteem what we have. And friends, you've got the joy of the spirit. He said, we greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he had clothed me with the garment of salvation. Salvation is enough for somebody to just wake up in the morning. He said, Pastor, look at the bills. I have not paid the bills. I don't know what to do. Glory! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. He said, what's wrong with you? Glory! The joy of salvation. Am I communicating? You know, in Nehemiah 8 verse 10, he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. My strength should not be drawn from how much I have in my bank account. My strength should be in the joy of salvation. 
Happiness is based on happiness around you. But joy does not have a reason. And the only reason is what salvation has done in us. Am I communicating? When I give you a car now, you can roll on the ground. But there's something that happens when the life of God comes into you. Joy meets with you. And that joy takes you above water. Friends, it's time we value what we have. We have the joy of salvation. When things are not working, we should esteem what we already have. He said, Pastor, I've finished school. I've not gotten a job. Thank God you are even job worthy. Did I, what did I say? You are job worthy. There are those who are not job worthy. You know, I never forget the story Bishop Oedipo said many years ago. He said there was a woman being carried on the wheelbarrow and was begging for arms. And then someone came again and said, Daddy, I have been, I'm matured now, I'm not married. He said, I looked at the woman, I said, you should thank God you are marriage worthy. Because that woman that is being pushed on that truck, she's not thinking of marriage. The only thing she's thinking of, if I can ever be well or get something to have my sustenance. Friends, whatever you think you need, thank God you are worthy of that thing. And Christ qualified you. With joy you can draw. So much to draw. We can draw from salvation. In salvation, everything you need is in there. Like I said on Sunday, we shouldn't do, on Thursday, I beg your pardon, we shouldn't do this maintenance culture or maintenance Christianity. I go to church on Sunday now. Thursday I come. I just, no. Participate actively in church. Get a unit and serve. If you are not in a unit, look for the evangel- Start doing evangelism on your own. Let your prayer life be top notch. Oh, pastor, I don't know how to pray during the day. If, if it's at night, you have time, you pray. The reason for VGs is because when people are too busy during the day, they pray at night. True of us. If you are too busy at night, you can, you, can, you can make up your mind that even 11 to 12 or 10 to 12, I must spend maybe 30 minutes. This year, I'm do more of praying in the spirit. Because you see, so much to learn when we pray in the spirit. Somebody say amen to that. Let me say with joy, I'll draw from the well of salvation. My health is there. My wealth is there. My well-being is there. My fulfillment is there. My ministry is there. Everything you will ever need. But joy, this year, don't wait for people to talk you down. What did I say? Don't wait for people to talk don't wait for people to sympathize with you. Even my mom told me, he said, I am sorry, it's not good in English language. Once you hear, I am sorry, your heart skips. If you go to the hospital with a patient and the doctor says, I am sorry, you know the negative will come to your mind. Don't wait for people to tell you sorry. There is something that has happened in you. There is a joy of salvation. He said, don't quench the spirit. Don't restrain the flow of the spirit. It means we can hinder the many things we have in salvation by quenching it. And how do we quench it? We allow physical things to quench the flow of the spirit because we give attention to physical things. A pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm happy for you that you are going through it. The Bible says in Isaiah, when you go through the water, I'm with you. So while you go through that thing, remember, he's with you. That should, that should ignite joy inside of you. That should cause you to celebrate. That God is with you in the midst of that challenge. You should be excited. Quench not the spirit. And despise not prophesying. You can, you can practice it today. How do you practice it? You can practice prophesying. You can hold your neighbor's hand today. And speak over your neighbor. And then you listen to your spirit. Uh, Dr. Combs, God will have me say this to you. You practice the supernatural. After service, you can hold somebody's hand. And pray with that person. And speak words of encouragement over that person. You see, you are practicing. And developing what you already have. It's not something strange. It's something you have been suppressing, you have been restraining. It has always been there. Prophecy is in you. You didn't hear me? I said prophecy is in you. The workings of miracle, they are in you. The signs and wonder, everything they are in you. See, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit did not come in half measure. When he came into you, he came with everything. It is the one you are ready to express that you see manifest in your life. Can I say that again? The Holy Spirit did not come by installment to say, okay, as I enter into a his today, I will enter with ability to teach. Tomorrow, as he keeps talking, 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 I will not make him prophesy. No. Everything that I will ever need came in the person of the spirit into me the day I received that life. But whatever I see is the one I have given attention to, to develop. 
Am I communicating? Once it was said that my Tyson's blow was up to 50 kg. That is, if he punches you, the weight of his blow was 50 kg. But we Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But we have men, okay, I'm okay. We have men who are bigger than Tyson, but their blow does not weigh up to 50 kg. So what's the difference? The difference is one has exercised his own over time, and through exercise, he has been able to build it up. You see, what you keep exercising is what you build up. Even the things of the spirit, it is what you exercise that you build up. Can I, hear, can I have an amen from someone? So squeeze your neighbors and say, Joy is what I have in salvation. I will rejoice. Come on, say, I will rejoice. Say like you mean, say, I will rejoice. I will not allow any man to rob me of what I already have. So I refuse to despise what I have. I will not despise it. That is how not to quench the spirit. How, who is the first to say amen? Maybe I rushed through Habakkuk 317. I rushed through it. So we'll use NLT as I begin to run up. Maybe I rushed through it. Habakkuk 317. Use NLT. Habakkuk 317. We'll use NLT before we get to verse 18. 17 before 18. NLT. Habakkuk 317. Media today, you are a little bit slow. But still rejoice. 317. NLT. Okay, let's read. One to go. Uh, who is on the console? NLT. Habakkuk 317. Head of media. Change that person on the console. NLT. 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 Good. Can, can we read together? I want to go. Even though the fig tree have no and there are no even though the olive crop fails and uh -huh, and though the flock die in the and the, that is nothing, nothing. What will happen? Next verse. Next verse. Verse 18. Yet. So those things cannot stop my joy. Tap your neighbor. Say nothing stops my joy. I will rejoice. Can I see you practice joy a little bit today? Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. I will rejoice. Pastor I'm not sure of the food to eat after service. Thank God that I have appetite. A billionaire many years ago was feeding on crackers and milk. What did I say? A billionaire many years ago was feeding on what? Crackers and milk. With all the money he had, he could not. But for you, I know people here. I don't want to mention their name. Twelve in the night, they can swallow a bar. You believe? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I read the last scripture. John 16, 19, 20. Blessed today. Hallelujah. John 16. Where did I quote again? And 20. John. Now this is what Jesus told them before he left. He was talking about that day of resurrection. 19. Who is on the council today? Jesus, I would have loved King James now. I'll be okay. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourself of that? I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while. And you shall see me again. He's talking about the resurrection. Because this time he would not live in us. But look at the next verse. 20. You have jumped from 19 to 21. Verily. 
Verily, I say unto you, that you shall weep and lament, but the world, because you see, I'm not just dying for these people. I'm not dying for the Jews. My death will bring joy to the world. <laughs> and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow, your sorrow shall be turned into what? It means that after I would have been taken by the wicked hands of men, but upon resurrection, as you see me, your joy will be full. Because salvation conveys joy to the believer. Friends, right where you are, you have the joy of the Lord. You have the joy of the Spirit. You have everything it takes to be above in life. So, quench not the Spirit. How? By not despising what you have. And what do you have? You have the joy of salvation. And you must allow this joy of salvation. Navigate you throughout this year. Refuse. Refuse for anything to put you down. Whether the fig tree produces or not. Rejoice. Oh pastor I have not gotten that thing. But I am no longer where I used to be. I have left where I used to be. And for the fact that I am moving. Something is happening. I want to ask a question and the way I will ask this question, I will ask our instrumentalists, the three of them, to just line up and I close. Three of them, quickly line up. Be smart about it and face this way. Face this way. Okay, good like that. Now watch. If they were in the queue to buy fuel, and this man is here, Brother Mecca, you already there, come and stay at their back. Just follow like this. <laughs> just stay behind. Thank you. Just stay there first. Give gap, yes. And they are selling fuel to this man. As long as they are selling fuel to this man, this man is hopeful. The first thing he will be calculating after two persons. Abi? So you leave. You can leave. They are sold to that man. You move close now. America, what is in your mind now? Remaining two persons. And they are selling to this person. It will soon get to me. So they sell to you. you